In this video, we're going to learn how to use the AGM-45 Shrike anti-radiation missile in the F-4 Phantom from Heatler. Hey guys, Cosmo here. Welcome to the video. And I just want to kind of preface some of the stuff that we're going to talk about today. I am not an expert on the Shrike. I never played the A4 mod, so as far as I'm concerned, I've never used the Shrike. I, I, I've played with Harms a little bit, which are a lot more advanced than this weapon system. But I love the idea of doing Seed. It's one of the things I've been really looking forward to with the F4 and the ability to use the Shrike. The only experience I have with the Shrike is watching the old Flight of the Intruder movie and they talked about using a Shrike there. Uh, but there is some setup that needs to be done and that's the thing that I think people need to understand. And, and what I love about the F4 and what I love about this sort of era is we really do have to do some good pre-planning. We can't just go out there with what we have and just kind of make it work. You got to kind of know what you're doing ahead of time. And with the Shrike, and we'll talk about that, how to set them up and how to uh, leverage it against the threats that you're expecting to face. Now, this video, as all the other Combat Ready series, is just meant to point you in the right direction, at least get you started. There's probably a few steps in here that I myself haven't figured out. I've watched some other people's videos. I'm even going to link a video of a quick and easy uh, guide that I saw. And of course, you can go check out Maverick's channel. He talked about it as well. But I've, one thing I've noticed is none of us seem to be getting all the picture. We're just kind of getting a little bit of it. So this is my chance to kind of put in some of my uh, picture as well and try to tie it all together. Uh, and then hopefully over time, we'll learn more as a community. We'll be able to share more. But I'm really enjoying the capability to do the seed mission. It's a lot of fun. And uh, hats off to the guys who have to do this kind of crap in real life because it looks scary as hell. But it's a lot of fun to do in DCS. So let's get into learning about the Shrike. All right, so here we are aboard the aircraft. And we're just going to talk about the quick setup for the AGM-45 Shrike. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to open up the ground crew rearm refuel menu to take a look at our missiles. So we can see here we have on board the AGM-45 Alpha Shrike anti-radiation missile. Now, understand that these missiles were sort of hodgepodge put together. My understanding is essentially they just took a Sparrow missile and put a different type of seeker on board so that it could find radiation and home in on it. With that being said, it doesn't have the ability to track all the different types of radar emissions and all the different bands out there. So we've got to have some pre-planning done to know what we're going after. So in this case, we know that uh, in this mission, we're going to go after some SA-8s. So you can see this little yellow triangle right here. We're going to click on that, and that's going to open up all these bands. Now, I don't have a perfect solution to what bands go with what. I'm going to try to remember to put in the description notes uh, a chart that I found. You guys can take a look at it, and it's uh, not led me wrong necessarily yet, uh, but it gives you some idea. So in this case, we're going after an SA-8. The Mark 49 Mod 1 band is what we're going to need on board. We are going to be in the direct attack profile. I don't know enough about the lower and upper RF limits to give you any advice here. Uh, I will say that I've had mediocre success going after SA-8s. I've had some success with SA-2 tracking radar, but not the search radar. It might be vice versa. But that's the challenge with this is the Shrike is not a great missile. But then there's also just the outlier of, is it a software issue? Is it DCS? Is it, you know, is it the game or is it real life? So you don't really know. Bottom line is I like to take a lot of them and shoot a lot of them because it doesn't cost me a dime. So once we go in and set our shrikes to the appropriate band that we want, uh, then we can close that menu down, let them load everything up. And then we just talk about our setup here in the cockpit. We don't need to worry about arming those. Uh, we can armor bombs, obviously. Of course, we're going to need to pick the stations that we have, the missiles on board. Of course, we're going to have to go to Master Arm Arm. But for our settings here, we're going to have to go to Direct. And for our Weapon Select, we're going to have to go to Arm, which is Anti-Radiation Missile, as you can imagine. So once we have all these things set up, and of course, once we go Master Arm, the aircraft is going to be ready to go. I'm going to go to Air to Ground Mode just to give us something to aim at. And then once we get into flight, we arm the missile once it starts to detect something in that band you should be getting a tone now i'm going to clip in uh while i'm talking about this 
that portion where it's showing that tone. There are different tones for different bands. I'm not smart enough or have information to tell me which tone is going to what, but I have noticed it different uh, on an SA-8 versus an SA-2 search radar versus an SA-2 tracking radar. So I'm sure that that, you know, for, for a real guy doing this stuff, that that tone told him something. What I can think of is let's say that we were going after two different types of systems. I might have one set on the outboards and another set on the inboards. And that would give me some indication as to what I was actually looking at. Uh, so maybe I knew that I was tracking with this particular, you know, this particular missile or whatever. I'm not sure the, the strategy behind it, but I'm sure there's a reason for it. Uh, but once you get that tone, as you move the reticle onto the target, that tone will increase in strength. So that also kind of helps you not only uh, guide yourself to the particular target, but also break out different targets. So you might have two different SA-8s, let's say, and you're supposed to go after one and not the other. If you know that the one guy's on the, the west and not the east, and you're pointing towards the east, then, then it kind of gives you an idea that, that you're on the wrong guy. So over time, as you play with it, you'll kind of figure out uh, what those tones are letting you know. Now, as far as an actual range, I have had mediocre success at about the six to seven maybe mile mark, depending on altitude. Now, I like to come in high, um, give that missile a little bit of extra juice and also makes it a little bit easier for me to find the target. Of course, that puts me at a disadvantage with the SAMs, but it gives me a chance to use that uh, altitude transition to airspeed and, uh, and get away and still get my missiles off. The problem with coming in close and bumping up uh doing a pop-up attack is of course you, you're really showing your your ass for a little bit and that guy has a chance to do something because typically sams are not going to just be a sam it's going to be a sam with some guns nearby so those are just things you have to consider and we're not really going to get into the tactics so much but what i'm going to do now is just play a quick video uh relatively quick of a quick seed mission that um, i and cronenberg flew last night uh just trying out the system trying out some tactics Unfortunately, the track uh, replay is not awesome. It did not really show the Shrikes go where they went in real life. Uh, we did get some hits, but uh, unfortunately, it just doesn't play back in a track file. And even on tack view, it shows the missiles kind of go into the into the earth <laughs> well below the target. So I'm not really sure what's going on. Uh, I haven't had a lot of success with track files in the past year. But I'm wondering, I'm thinking, and I hate to blame Heat Blur, but I think that sometimes the interactive menu uh, definitely can mess with track files because I've noticed a, a sharp decline in my track file playback. So uh, just take my word for it that we, we did score some hits, but again, it's not 100%, and that you're not looking for 100% accuracy. I mean, obviously you want that, but you're not, you shouldn't expect that, I guess is what I should say. You are essentially putting something out there and hoping that it either hits the enemy or causes them to to turn away, turn off their radar, and allow you to go in and do the other the other business that you came to do. Now, one thing of note, we can change the audio tone from the Shrike way back here, the oral control. We can turn that down. That will change the intensity of the audio that you get when you get the Shrike lined up. I do not do that in the video that's to come because honestly, I didn't know that until very recently uh, before I was doing this mission, but I wanted to share that with you. All right, so let's go ahead and get into that video. You want to go you west? Guys live? East, or? Yeah, you want to break off. Uh, I'm going to come 10 left. All right, I'll go. I'll go east. I'll get the eastern SA. Oh, you're in a, doing another strike? Yeah, we're going to try. Here, I'll spectate. I'll spectate and out see what going. happens. Okay. That was the Here's the other thing, Casmo. I say it can be optically guided. Yes, that's true. Think about that's that, true. So. We may have killed the radar, <laughs> and then the guy was yeah. optically. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. But still, we want to see that thing burn, right? So. Well, I don't think you're going to get like a a burn vehicle the, kill. Right. Oh, see, now I'm fine. Gonna, I'm getting it. You're going to disable it so it. Okay, so you guys are. All right, here. I'm getting I'm getting a strike signal on the. Uh, yep, I see its radar yeah. turning. The west guy. The radar is turning, but it's not looking at you yet. I'm at 12 miles. All right, I'm in burner. The other one. Okay, so only one of them it's is turning right now. Is uh, looking. All right, Cronenberg, I'm in. West guy. Roger. Got a good tone for once. Eight miles. 
looking at the okay. east climb a little further out. His silo doors are open. Seven Where's miles. He launched, he launched. He launched. The oh. eastern guy launched. Eastern yep. guy launched. East guy launched. All right. All right. Oh. Magnum. Can do it. One, two. And Magnum again. Right, so I okay, shot. that's mud. Eight o'clock. SA8. Oh, Nelly. Offensive. All right. All right. Spectating. I'm pretty sure mine are not going to track. But oh shit! I only have. Okay, wait. All right. Defeated. Now, as luck would have it, we did manage to defeat uh, those SAM shot at us and uh, managed to get some hits on those SAM launchers. And I'm going to put that footage of showing these damage SAMs. Unfortunately, again, the TAC view just didn't play out uh, and the replay was just kind of garbage. Uh, but I did manage to find that the, that the impacts for these SAMs, and you can see that it didn't destroy the vehicle, but it did damage them so the radar was not operating. Uh, now, as you may have heard some some back and forth, they were talking about that earlier we had this happen too, where we think that the SAM just kind of went into an optical guidance mode and managed to take some shots at us after we were no longer getting indications on our RWR. So those are just the things you need to think about. And honestly, I like that. That's kind of fun uh, because it's not just a one and done, but you don't know, is the guy going to take a shot at you? Uh, but yeah, they're a lot of fun to play with. I just encourage you to just get in there and just kind of set up some radar, set up some missiles, and just start shooting at stuff and seeing if you can make things happen and see if it makes any sense to you whatsoever and to just kind of work on your tactics. And again, I think some things are going to get developed over time as uh, Eagle Dynamics and, and I guess Heat Blur. I'm not really sure who has ownership of the strike. I think it's ED, but I'm sure as we've seen that the things come out and then they got to get developed and refined just a little bit. All right, so let's show this thing in action. We just got an SA-8 report. We're 11 miles from that SA-8 because I created the mission. All right, let's go ahead and arm up our missiles. And I'm gonna go armed, I'm gonna go direct, and I'm gonna set to arm, and already we're getting that audio tone. Now, one thing I wanna draw your attention to is I did the outboards. I don't know if it's a bug or a feature. If you do all four, it's gonna shoot these two and leave these two on board, which makes you very imbalanced. So I'm gonna try and shoot the outboards. All right, so we're at 15,000 feet, 16,000 feet, and we're at eight miles. I'm gonna go full burner, and I've got that tone. So the missile is seeing the uh, the radar. I'm gonna get to about seven and a half, six miles. And I'm gonna send two away. I'm gonna turn outbound. And then we're gonna jump over to the camera and see what those bad boys are doing. Now we do wanna continue to put ourselves in a position where the radar will continue to search for us because that's the way the missile is going to track. So we might get shot at, we may need to be prepared for that, but I'm going to jump over to the F6 and see what happens. All right, so that was a good hit with at least one of the missiles. I didn't see the other, uh, but we're seeing that there's no indications of the SA-8. Now, one thing to consider, certain SAM systems are going to have the ability to optically track you uh, we're gonna just zip on down there see if he pops back up, but we've still got two missiles on board I shot two and the reason I shot two is just for some redundancy But I shot them very close together because if I do shoot one and it damages the radar uh, The other one is at least close behind and it might actually still hit the vehicle because we're gonna zoom in and We can see that guy. He's smoking. He's still alive But he's not transmitting Now you may be wondering why a missile that size can only get so much range even when fired from such a high altitude and if you look at the fins it's going through what's called a bang bang procedure meaning there's not a lot of fine tuning it's just literally that thing's moving to either end of its axes so you can imagine that over time that's creating a lot of drag so you've got to make sure that this missile has a lot of energy and is able to reach the target so that's why you've got to get closer now in the direct mode the book does say that you want to dive in on the target, but again, as long as you can get it up to the point where you would be diving, so for instance, if we were above it at 20,000 feet or something like that, 10,000 feet, if we can get the missile to start at that point and let gravity take its course, it can still guide itself down there. Now, I have tested this at various altitudes and air speeds, and I'm not finding a lot of difference when it comes to range. Now, I imagine if you go even higher, you could probably squeeze out another mile, but uh, it was the difference between shooting at six miles from about 6,000 feet all the way up to about 15,000 feet was relatively negligible. 
as always a big thank you to everyone who supports the channel through patreon and youtube membership i really do appreciate it and thanks a lot to you guys for watching the channel all the the great comments uh for for all the, the the combat ready series i hope it's helpful again i'm just one of those guys i don't have a lot of patience or time to dig into the nuts and bolts because i don't care that much uh, but i just like to have fun i like to have fun with my friends and that's really what the the focus of these uh videos is to help you guys get ready as well anyway uh this will probably be the last video i do for the f4 for a while we've got kiowa coming very soon i'm working on some videos for that as well and then uh, i gotta go back and do uh, normal people work too so we will see you guys soon. Keep playing the F4. I'm enjoying the hell out of it. And a uh, big thanks to Heatblur for putting it together. It is a great module. And thanks to uh, Eagle Dynamics and DCS World in general for allowing us to have this kind of fun with this kind of stuff. So we'll talk to you guys later. Take it easy.